Good morning. I think I'm in business again to share some more of what all is going on. And I'll tell you what, I remembered, I'm getting a little older, but I remembered that my mama, my sweet mother, I lost her when she was 85 years old, and I'm already five years older than she was when she went to glory, but I have her history here. That is my mother at about 20 years of age. And she wrote down all about their relatives and how she had brothers and sisters. And one of these days, I'm going to share that with y'all. But today, I'm going to tell you what fun I had. I saw 34,000 people are following me on YouTube. That's another miracle, children. It really is. Bella is here to help me this morning. I got my coffee. And we went shopping. Me and number three, they redid the Salvation Army store. And we the f some of the first ones there. And I found some deals. I got a bunch of real pretty pins, $2 a piece, no hats, nothing worth, uh-uh, didn't have any. Bella, get right over there while I talk to these children. And I just... Um, there she is. And look, there's pages of this stuff. And I read it a few years ago. She did this before she passed away so that the children would know our, her heritage. See, I'm the oldest of nine. She had seven boys and two girls. And her first child passed away. It died. It fell in a fireplace, burned itself pretty bad, got pneumonia, and died. That's why I am Princess Claire. Lois Baird Rice because she was so glad to get a baby and daddy said I was bad. I had colic. I can't wait to tell y'all about this but I've got to read it good and get it straight in my mind because she tells about her brothers. She had two sisters and four brothers. Uh, her mama did and she tells about her mama and her daddy. It's fascinating. So we went shopping, and Brother Andy, 967 Andy, came this morning and helped me with my iPad, and I have made $2. I That'll buy a cup of coffee, except James pays for the coffee. Number three buys my coffee and my meals. He's very generous. Of course, this is cheap coffee. Ugh, you know, 63 cents or something. Two for a dollar twenty-eight, and we get them most every morning. I tell you what, I just shake my head and wonder at y'all. I cannot understand why anybody would want to listen to me that much. You're just good listeners. That's all there is to it. Anyhow, we have a lot of things going on in our neighborhood, and people in the hospital. Our next door neighbor. Got pneumonia, gonna have to have stuff drained off his lungs, lungs, uh, Mr. Van Meter, uh, just things going on everywhere. But we got our RSV shots, and you know it didn't even hurt. I'll tell you what, I am speechless with what's happening with YouTube. I think I'm gonna stop this one and Wait till I get my mom's thing. This. It is, it, well, look at that hair. Now, I didn't have hair like her. She always, until she passed away, she had a big head of hair. I was wearing wigs when I was four, 26 years old, when I had my first baby. James is working today. Number three is working. He's 82. Still stays busy. And I... I read, and I watch Hannity. I try to keep up with what's going on in the world. I was watching my other granny that I watched chit chat with Miss Pat, Granny Pat, and I thought, she just sits there and tells about her day. Well, I'm telling about my day today, and it's fun. I'm so glad James finally bought a car that makes him buckle up. He would not buckle up, but this car don't stop. Yippin'. 
bang, clang, 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 till you buckle up. I said, honey, I'm glad you got it. And now it's a, it's a fan, and it's a 2007 Town and Country. I, he got that really at a good deal from a used car lot that this, this lawyer that I have used, that is a Christian, of course, and he lives down at the corner and he's got his, he does social security and he sells cars and he's been doing it since he was 25 years old. Tim Riddinger. He's wonderful. I just love him. And his sister, they work the office and she's always there with him. And so he has cars there. Now James has ended up buying three from him so far since, but then we've been married 14 years and everybody likes my number three husband. We have the same mechanic that I have known him since he was two years old. He His station is catty-cornered from where I stay during the day, my home. His name is David Clemens, and his daddy was his mechanic, my mechanic before them. And my first husband and I were in the donut business. We delivered donuts all over, and he, number one, had a big truck that would haul thousands of, so many donuts. I mean, he delivered all over these donuts. And David, her, David's dad, Big Dave, took care of that big truck. He took, did, did all of our mechanical work. So handy, right? He changes my oil in my car. Young David does. And I've known him since he was two. And now he's, a, he's a grandpa, I think. But he's still there. And so anyhow, Big David, Father David, called me and number one up one day and he said, I want you to come over here and look at this. We said, what? He said, just come and look. So you know what? We went over. And you know what was laying there on its side? Our big van. Our big van. It didn't kill anybody. That scared Bella when I hollered, but I couldn't believe. There lay our big van. What can you do? It didn't kill anybody. I said, well, what do we do? He said, well, we was, you know, putting tars on it and checking on it. And then this young guy that was helping him got it unbalanced and it went over. He had insurance, took care of hiring us another uh, van till we could deliver our donuts. But I never saw such a thing. And another time I looked over and I can see it from here because it's catty corner from us across the street. And big flames were shooting up from one of his gas pumps. I called the fire department. They got there and put it out before it got down in the tanks. And then another time, I live in an exciting place over the years that's happened. My front yard is only about 65 feet off the main drag of Grantline. And I had a fence up. And cars come through that fence. Well, now we got our fence moved way back. But just right there, not too far uh, didn't have no sidewalks or anything. A car struck a man and killed him right there by my house. I mean, and then I had neighbors years ago. In fact, is they were the ones that built this home that I live in, and I dated his son when I was in Sunday school, Charles Herman. I think he's gone on too. I don't know for sure, but he he was a cute guy. I only dated the good-looking ones. <laughs> But I met him at church, and we dated for some time. And he had a one of those scooter things, and I just love to ride on that thing. i got to fix this. And he said, you know, this will go 30 miles an hour. I said, let's go for it. And I would ride that thing fast with him, and it was fun. But his daddy and mama got a divorce. He married another lady, and they drank back at that time, though they had been in church, they backslid really bad. They made it right before they went because they're both gone. I know for sure she did. But anyhow, they lived one house over, a house in between us. They owned that one also, and then the one on the corner. And when I first moved here back in 1963, it's been a while, they would get in a fight, both of them drinking, and there was big bushes all around my house. And one night I woke up, I heard all this racket, and she was screaming, and he was screaming, and they was hollering and carrying and cussing. And he 
got hid behind one of the bushes, and I opened the door, and I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm hiding for, from her before she catches me. <laughs> I said, okay. And I went back in the house and minded my own business. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, they're both gone. And uh, anyhow, she uh, got diabetes. And it, if you don't control your diabetes, it makes you irrational at times. It, you're almost mental. And sometimes she would say, hi there, how are you doing today? Next day she could say, what the H bad word are you doing over almost in my yard? But you know what? I just prayed for him and witnessed to her. And Charles, the son that I dated, this is a terrible story. And I'm going to tell you anyway, because it's a true story. They backslid and they moved north into another state and they bought a bar, Charles did, and his wife. And they went back to living the bad life. And don't you know, he got drunk, Charles did, who I, who I dated, who was so handsome. He got drunk and she let somebody, the wife was working in the bar and she was seven months pregnant. This is a true story. And he came in drunk in a rage and shot her through the stomach and killed her dead and the baby. Well, his daddy who lived over from me had money and he fought that murder charge because Charles was so drunk. He was out of his mind with liquor. That's what liquor will do to people sometimes. Make them out of their mind, don't do it. Don't even start it. I used to, when I was younger, I wouldn't take a drink of wine because I was afraid I'd turn into an alcoholic and just love it, love it, you know, give me some more. I didn't drink it. That way I wasn't tempted. Later on, I did taste it. It didn't make me drunk. It didn't make me a drunkard. I did not get addicted from sipping it. You know, just about that much in a glass of sweet wine. But I, the Bible does say take a little wine for your stomach's sake. So I took it for my stomach's sake. Okay, back to Charles in prison. His daddy got him out after 10 years, and he corresponded with this girl that went to church with us. And when he got out, he married her, and he had another child. But those, they, he left three little babies, three little children. I mean, you know, like two, four, and six. Well, I was happy to hear that a family adopted all three of them and raised them together. A well-to-do family took them, and I in Lexington, Kentucky, long ways from us. But I want to tell you something really strange. Charles, my ex-boyfriend, he built this house that I live in now in the rear where we built us an apartment in the rear when we, number one, and I went on the evangelistic field. And you know what? As soon as he got out of prison, he came to see me. He came to see me. And we sat and reminisced. And, and talked. He had not married Betty. He would just got out. And later on, he married Betty, and he came to back in church with his new wife. God restored him, folks. And I was so happy, but there he sat in that rocking chair I had. And what do you say to him? I mean, I didn't know what to say to him. He just wanted to see his house that he had built, him and his dad had built, for him and the young lady that he killed, his the mother to his children. And so I let him visit and, you know, offered him a drink. And we sat and chatted about the weather. I mean, what do you say? And he went his way. And later on, he married this girl that corresponded with him all the time he was in prison. And he got back right with the Lord. And that's the wonderful end to that story. And she's in heaven, I pray. Because... She didn't drink, the wife didn't, but the Charles did, and it got the best of him. But, and he got another chance. You know, God is a God of second chances, really and truly, and I saw it. And Charles, I don't know for sure if he's still alive because he was older than me, he probably isn't. I don't think he is, but if he sees it, don't matter, because you know what, honey? 
when the truth is the truth, that's the way it is. And I tell you what, I, I'm just sharing some of the things that I have lived through and the Lord took me through. And you know what? When I, I, when I bought this house, I was so thrilled because we was living in a little old two bedroom and I had several children. Well, the twins and Kim, and then we adopted a little boy. We added another room. And I just love that house, this house here. And so what I did as soon as we bought it in 1963, I got my Sunday school teachers and the ladies of my class. We came over, they came over and we dedicated my home to the Lord. And it's always been a place where God is welcome to be. And y'all are welcome to talk to me and listen to me. And I am reading as many comments as I can and they're so wonderful. Kiddos, I tell ya, I am bum fuzzled <laughs> with the response that this is getting. But they're, I'm different. I know I'm different. My mom always told me, you're different. She thought I was a witch. You may not have watched all my videos. And I'll repeat this. My mom was a young mother and I was very precocious. That's your word for today, precocious. I was precocious, look it up if you don't know. But <laughs> she let a broom drop in front of me out on the porch. And she said, at 25 years of age, thank God, you're not a witch. That was a test. They, that was a superstition that a witch would not step over a broom. I stepped over that sucker. I'm not a witch and I'm not an angel. I'm just somebody trying to make it with the help of the Lord who gets me through all these trials and tribulations. Be not deceived. We're going to have them, kiddo. And it's good if you hold on to the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all keep walking that walk. My husband will go to sleep when he watches this video. I just know he will. But he needs a nap every now and then after he work, works all day. <laughs> I'm going to drink my coffee and watch Hannity. Y'all have a blessed day. I love each and every one of y'all. I'm looking you right in the eye right now. Be good. Behave yourself. Bye-bye.